After finishing our Canning stock route trip at Billy Luna at the northern end of the track, we turned for home, but first we wanted to visit the art centre at Balgo. We found a great little spot to camp for the night off the Tanami track before heading to Balgo the next day. It was really windy, so we put the cars together for some shelter from the wind before exploring the red rocky hills behind camp with some great views. After checking out the Great Arts Centre at Balgo and purchasing a painting, we headed just out of town to check out the Balgo Pound before turning southeast with our aim eventually being the Sandy Blight Junction Road. We make our way down some lesser known tracks as we head towards the Sandy Blight Junction Road and ultimately we're going to hit the Gary Junction Road before that. It's remote but beautiful country out here, that's for sure. Pretty flat but uh, quite windy, quite changeable. Camp for the night's just tucked in behind some trees on a stony gibber sort of plain. I came across this clay pan and it was pretty windy so I wanted to put the drone up but thought it might have been too windy for it so we headed out across it but eventually I reneged and put it up and seemed to get a bit of footage for us which was okay, the drone coped so that was fine. Follow the tracks right across this little clay pan. Another great little camp spot tucked in amongst some trees at the end of the day. The next day we make it back to Kiwikura, refuel and get an ice cream, and then head out to Lake Mackay, the largest ephemeral salt lake in WA. With an area of almost 3,500 square kilometres, it's the fourth largest lake in Australia, and measures approximately 100 kilometres east-west and north-south. I understand the first white man to note its existence was explorer David Carnegie in 1897. It was another really windy day so we thought it best just to leave the drone in the car this time. We continued on to Kintor, finding a nice camp in among some boulders near the Kintor range. And we were also visited by a curious dingo during the evening. Next morning we had a walk around these interesting rock formations where we'd camped before heading south down the Sandy Blight Junction Road, ultimately heading for Uluru. Sandy 
150 lashes damper. Let's see how that goes tonight. In the camp oven. Yeah, you made a 151 last year? I thought I made a pale one. found a nice camp for the night in among some desert oaks, not too far from a Lynn Bedell Plark and Blaze tree, about halfway down the track. Of course the damper was really nice too. Next morning we put the drone up just to have a look around the area where we'd camped among these desert oaks. Down towards the south end of the Sandy Blight Junction track, we head into Bungabitty Rock Hole. Just to have a look at that, there's a bit of water in there. Bungabitty Rock Hole. Bit of water in there. Yeah. Birds, finches in the background up in the trees there. Leaving the Sandy Blight Junction Road, we head east towards Docker River and on to Lassiter's Cave. After camping not far past Lassiter's Cave, we continue on the Great Central Road, eventually meeting the bitumen at Katajuta. We continue on into Uluru and Yulara where we camp, and that ends this particular section of our trip.